This is one of the biggest scandals of the Liberal government. You didn't take an oath to protect those other people. You take I... an oath to protect Canadians, to protect and serve Canadians. The armed forces were effing furious. Liberal cabinet minister Harjit Sajjan is defending himself against allegations made in a Globe and Mail report. It's been revealed that former defense minister Harjit Sajjan abused of his position for the benefit of his own religious group. A liberal minister ordering our military to prioritize 225 Afghan six over our own people to get them out of the country. The report says Sajjan instructed Canadian Special Forces in Kabul to rescue Afghan six. An operation military sources reportedly said took focus away from helping Canadian citizens. Um, the issue at hand was whether specific Special Forces resources were um, directed to sort of try to meet up with this group and facilitate their access uh, to the airport. Harchi specifically instructed the troops he presided over to focus first and foremost on rescuing Afghan Sikhs. No, not Canadian Sikhs living in Afghanistan, but Sikhs who happen to be Afghan nationals. Sajjan was asked about the Globe's report at an event earlier in Vancouver. Okay, let me address the, the Globe article quite directly, um, because I'll be honest with you, it was utter BS. Uh, those who were following uh, the uh, evacuation missions and then uh, events of, uh, previously to that uh, know quite well that there was an approved government policy uh, to safely evacuate as many uh, vulnerable Afghans as possible, which included obviously Canadians uh, first, um, those who worked with us like um, our interpreters. And it also included vulnerable Afghans, which included uh, religious minorities like the uh, uh, the Afghan six uh, and Hindus. And, and I can assure you all effort was done uh, to carry this out and do it in a safe as, uh, uh, possible manner and to get as many uh, uh, people uh, out as possible as well. And I also want to uh, just mention the fact, uh, you know, to, to read that story and to take some of the, these questions, given that it was a, a approved government, a, a government policy that we were executing, um, I'll be honest with you, I didn't think I'd be getting those questions if I wasn't wearing a turban. And those who actually know me, know me quite well that um, throughout my careers and my, my service, I've rarely ever even talked about racism and what it actually meant. But I'll be honest with you, um, you know, it needs to be called out. And the reason um, being, just last night, um, my daughter was not even aware of uh, this article to come out. And she, on her own, was talking about the visceral hatred. And she's 15, 15 years old, by the way visceral hatred that you see on, online and the kind of messaging that's being pumped out there uh, on, on social media. And I do, you know, uh, console her saying, you know what, it was better before. Uh, look, you know, uh, sorry, what I mean, it's better now than it was before. It doesn't make it easier for her to, to see this. And I couldn't tell her at that time, by the way, there's another article that's going to be coming out um, that is going to kind of justify which the type of questions uh, she's even asking now. And I know that she's not alone in this. As I said, I could give you the, the my press sector and provide you with the statement, but there were many vulnerable groups and I was getting contacted by many different groups, which include everything from the women's soccer team to vulnerable uh, parliamentarians, LGBTQ, many others, and all the information was just being fed up so that our folks can do the best job they can to bring as many people out as safely as possible, which included Canadians and interpreters as well. So you were feeding more information? We, everybody was feeding groups. as much information uh, yeah. as well from every, every source that was provided because we want to do um, everything in our power to get as many people out as safely as we could. So. That was vile. How dare you question this defense minister because racism? I can only surmise that if I did not wear a turban, no one would question whether my actions were appropriate. It's not racism that he's being questioned. It's the donations. That's the reason he's being questioned. Instead of answering directly with his own kind of voice, he referred people to a lengthy kind of two-page statement that has been circulated to the media uh, since this morning and was given also uh, to the Globe and Mail um, and, and aspects of that included in the Globe and Mail's uh, report uh, today. Um, I, as opposed to other things that the special forces needed to be doing to facilitate the evacuation of other people on the priority list, which of course at the top is Canadian citizens, then permanent residents, 
incidents, then individuals in Afghanistan to whom Canada, its government, its aid organizations, its media organizations had a direct responsibility to try to keep safe, people who had worked as interpreters and drivers. The protection of other religious minorities who no one is disputing uh, were vulnerable, visibly vulnerable, if you're talking about a, a sick living in Afghanistan, um, subject to violence, you know, that had been known for months by this point that they were not going to be safe now that sort of uh, the Taliban had taken over Kabul. Um, yes, they were eligible, but sort of there was a kind of an articulation of sort of a hierarchy, if you will. And what the Globe and Mail was reporting um, that through a direct intervention, a text message from the minister providing information to the military as a result of that, um, you know, military sources telling the newspaper uh, that there was a lot of anger in the military ranks about having to sort of go and try to find this particular group of Afghans who weren't even Canadian citizens and didn't have a direct kind of tie to Canada um, when they were trying to focus desperately instead on sort of others that, that they uh, were trying to evacuate. Uh, that's the nub of the story. And I'm not sure that in his news conference today, uh, we necessarily um, got clarity. He was asked a lot about the direction he was giving um, the military. He said he felt it was appropriate for the minister to be uh, directing people to follow the policy. I don't think that was in dispute. He was asked about whether he was providing information about any other groups who were trying to escape. And he said, yes, there were a lot of people reaching out to him at that point, and they were feeding all sorts of information in, uh, he suggested. But um, not quite clear if he gave other groups quite as much help as this particular group. Um, and then finally, sort of uh, on the issue of sort of whether there was anyone else who had this kind of direct kind of text message. Um, again, he referred people to the statement, um, but the statement doesn't really address that. Um, I want to show you just, um, we got a long statement from the Department of National Defense as well, because this of course is about the decisions they were making on the ground. Uh, in part, here's the key paragraph from that. It says, all evacuation operations were conducted in accordance with direction by the Government of Canada and the Minister of National Defense. Orders were issued by the CDS and his operational level commanders, and they considered risks to carrying out these operations. One of the things we don't know is exactly who the minister texted inside the chain of command. His, his version of events in his statement is that he, he sent his information through the chain of command, that he was not meddling. The decisions on the ground were made by those in charge of the tactical operations on the ground. Um, but we don't know kind of how it went up and how it came back down. Uh, again, that is not a precision that is in the Globe and Mail story. And providing direction. Now, we go to another Globe and Mail article entitled, Harjit Sajjan will remain in cabinet and shame on you for asking about it. Mr. Sajjan didn't actually answer the question about how he draws a distinction between a direction and an order during that news conference, though Chief of the Defense Staff General Wayne Iyer later answered it for him. A direction essentially is an order. Quote, we follow legal direction and the groups that were listed were part of approved groups, so we got on with it, end quote, he told the Canadian press. He said his role is not to decide, quote, whether the government priority was right or wrong, end quote. Having been defense minister for about six years by that point, Mr. Sajjan surely understood that there is no such thing as a quote-unquote suggestion from the Minister of National Defense to the military. Yet this attempt to split hairs over definitions was the same explanation that Mr. Trudeau leaned on to defend his actions during the SNC-Lavalin affair. At the time, he said he merely suggested then Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould consider a deferred prosecution agreement for the beleaguered company. He said he didn't instruct her to seek one. Minister Sajjan said that when he was defense minister, he directed the Canadian Armed Forces to help a group of Afghan Sikhs during the evacuation in Afghanistan in 2021, and that he relayed information to the military about how to rescue them. Is that appropriate for the Minister of National Defense to have done that? Uh, the, the scenario around uh, what he did or didn't do, I mean, we just take a step back and look at the overall um, actions of the Liberal government, of the minister, of the prime minister when it comes to Afghanistan. It was a massive failure. Like, there were so many levels of failure there. We weren't able to get Canadians out. Our own Canadians weren't, weren't able to get out. I mean, that's always going to be a top priority. Then our allies, there's people that put their lives at risk for us. They weren't. 
evacuated. That is already a massive failure. And then there's an additional responsibility that Canada has to ensure that people that are suffering have some solace or some refuge in Canada. We have been leaders in, in welcoming refugees. And that is another ad additional responsibility we have. When people saw the Taliban regime coming in, they knew that that meant a lot of people's lives were at risk and Canada had a responsibility. And so uh, those responsibilities were not met. Canada failed. The minister, the prime minister failed. And, and the failure meant that a lot of people's lives were at risk and continue to be at risk. And that's a, that's a serious problem. But from your perspective, is it appropriate or not for the Minister of Defense at that time to be getting involved to try and help out um, Afghan Sikhs get to Canada? The, the specific, I, I don't know enough of the details about the specifics of what uh, Mr. Uh, Minister Sajjan did or didn't do, but I can tell you that the Liberals failed. They failed miserably and, and, it, and it hurt people. Uh, I take no joy in pointing out this failure because Canadians suffered as a result. Uh, we saw that, that our allies suffered as a result and, and minority communities that were at threat. Women, uh, minority religious communities, all who were at a threat because of all that. No one was safe when the Taliban regime was coming in and, and they all failed. And so I am very critical of the minister and of the prime minister of their failed response to this serious crisis. And the result of that crisis was many lives were put in, in deep jeopardy. So he's calling out that aspect of the story, but we still lack the precision as to whether there was some kind of favoritism or prioritization here um, based on a particular relationship uh, that he had with this particular group. <laughs>